Good morning, folks. We've got NOAA weighing in on the incoming solar eruption, but making a mistake in their model. News about earthquakes, volcanoes, sea level, weather, and the Fermi bubbles of the Milky Way galaxy. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at the last 24 hours on our star and 193 angstroms, certainly not the level of activity we saw the previous day, and indeed, after the eruption of the solar flare and CME that kicked off the day yesterday, we have seen a calmer star as the sunspots began to depart towards the limb and their magnetism appears simple compared to the time preceding the flare. We'll come back to the CME coming at Earth in a moment. As we view the calm again here in ionized helium, let's go next to the solar wind. After the brief and modest intensification event two days ago, things have been very quiet in geospace. The streams are settled into ambient quiet and so are geomagnetic conditions. But that won't be the case tomorrow night. Noah's Enlil spiral showing the CME heading right at the green dot of Earth to the right. We now have both NASA and NOAA confirming Earth impact for this eruption, but you'll recall from last night that while Space Weather News forecasts impact tomorrow, NASA thinks it wouldn't be until Thursday, an entire day later. NOAA here indicates that the CME will arrive tomorrow in the afternoon U.S. time, which puts them in line with the Space Weather News forecast. We'll find out tomorrow night. But as you should also remember, we've got a coronal hole expected to ramp up solar wind with its own streams either late on the 15th or early on the 16th. They are already on their way here now. But when we come to Noah's Enlil spiral and look at the velocity profiles on the bottom line, our pleasure at the corresponding impact time for the CME is tempered by their completely ignoring the coronal hole. They show decreasing solar wind speed through the 17th, which would be at least a five-day coronal hole stream arrival time. That would be a first for space weather. In fact, the coronal hole stream will act as the second impact behind the CME no more than 36 hours later and much more likely to be within 24. Coronal hole also driving the significant lithospheric alert until the weekend. Quick news here out of UC Santa Cruz. Studying the mega thrust off the shores of Costa Rica might not be your first thought for tsunami makers around the Ring of Fire, but it is more than capable. Article is a good read. A group of scientists went to one of the most threatened places in the world by sea level rise, but found increased land exposure at eight of the nine Tuvalu Islands. Whoops. Up next, you've got two Fermi Bubble articles in the links today, one with incredible imaging of the galactic phenomenon and one on its origin related to a potential consumption-produced cosmic jet event. Veteran observers will be familiar with these features as being teased out of high-emission fog between us and the galactic center and also as being prominent features in our most popular YouTube series last year, Where Are We Going?, Folks, all four episodes of that series are linked for you right below the video, and it does 100% tie in to our 2018 series on Earth's magnetic reversal. If you've been liking our recent reversal videos, you have got to watch the setup. Quick note, looking back on the last big quake on Earth, we can confirm that not only did QuakeWatch.net user Lester nail this one and the 6.1 that hit there two days earlier, but he did so to within just 65 miles of the epicenter location. And with less than 4% of Earth on alert at this time, it is one of the more significant forecast successes we have seen over at QuakeWatch.net. Have you learned to predict earthquakes yet? We also peek in on the Tongan cyclone, moving on now, but homes and even parliament was destroyed on the island nation. Somewhat similar story unfolding in the Philippines right now as well, with a system breaking apart after dropping torrential rains and triggering deadly landslides. The system will continue westward towards Vietnam. Lastly, folks, been getting a lot of emails coming in about Jennifer Huxley's recent photo of lightning in Queensland. Amazing shot. Big kudos to her. The questions have been how lightning could possibly converge onto one point on the ground. Well, indeed, that is not what this is, folks. This is the ground firing back at the clouds. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.